This is Kardec Radio bringing to you the book Among Brothers of Other Lands, written by several spirit authors and psychographed by Chico Xavier and Waldo Vieira. This partial audio recording will cover Chapter 2 In the Dissemination of Spiritism, Chapter 3 Green Fruits and Chapter 4 The Wealth Enjoy Chapter 2 In the Dissemination of Spiritism and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, Jesus. From John chapter 14, verse 16. As the promised consoler by Jesus to humanity, Spiritism will without a doubt reach all consciences. However, due to the multiple interpretations that it received in the diverse human nuclei, how should we await the accomplishments of Christ's promise? In this sense, let us remind ourselves of the early years of Kardec's codification. Alan Kardec, concerned about it, formulated the question 798 of the Spirit's book to which the spiritual instructors meticulously answered. It will certainly become a common belief and will mark a new era in the history of humankind, for it belongs to nature, and the time has come in which it must take its place among the other branches of human knowledge. It will, nevertheless, have to withstand great struggles, more against personal interest than against conviction, because you must not ignore the fact that there are persons interested in fighting it, some out of self-love, others from purely material motives. Its opponents, however, will become more and more isolated and will finally be forced to think like the others, lest they make themselves look ridiculous. Let us then certify ourselves that in the dissemination of the spiritist principles we are all battling for goodness in order to extinguish evil, knowing that nobody will achieve the longed-for victory without the will to learn and the provision of work. London, August 10, 1965 Chapter 3 Green Fruits by Kelvin Van Dyne the spiritist heir of superior knowledge stumbles in resentment and hurts, nourishing a perfectly new attitude when confronted with one of other religious principles. Because the spiritist admits the continuity of life after death, he or she does not see offenders as enemies or irresponsible people. He or she sees them as deviant companions who need to be rescued to goodness. Due to that, moral assaults present relative importance to him or her, although they may hurt his or her pride. Why nourish hatred about someone when you are convinced that through the law of reincarnation, the person you hate can come to your arms in the form of a loved one in your family team? On the other hand, you cannot ignore the evil that reached you, as you are certain of the law of individual responsibility. Herein the balanced behavior that such circumstances suggest to you. Serenity without indifference, within which you realize that there is no use in wasting time with hidden sorrows or inappropriate complaints. In this manner, receive all offending manifestations of offense, malice, aggression, or incomprehension, that come from others with the tranquility of the sower who receives from the companion a wide collection of green fruits to which there is no way to put them in the area of your interests. And as you know that the individual who is in charge of that production will work hard to provide mature fruits, wait for them patiently. Therefore, if there is an effort to be done by the spiritist when facing attacks on the way, this rematch is always the response of the most efficient service to all challenges that he or she is a target of. Let us remember this when facing injuries and contempt. For us, Christ's words, love your enemies and pray for the ones who persecute and slander against you, does not mean to either green light the ones who wallow in evil or exhibit our superiority to them. Those words clearly mean that we should not cut the ties of fraternal love that identify us with one another. It confers them the right to be responsible for the mistakes that they practice. And it is on us to envelope them in the restorative vibrations of prayer, while staying on going with the undisturbed construction of goodness, which will always render light and truth, joy, 
and blessings for them and for us. Silver Spring, USA, June 10, 1965. Chapter 4. The Wealth by Hilario Silva. Amelia Cowper, an elder, was at her home in the surroundings of the Chesapeake Bay in the countryside of Maryland when Craig Peter, one of her many nephews, paid her a visit to see how she was doing. Your Uncle James, she said to her nephew in reference to her discarnated husband. Since he became a medium in a spiritist temple, he gave everything he could to the needy. He did not leave debts, but after the funeral, I got to know that even our own house was financed, and due to that, I went bankrupt. Are you bankrupt, Aunt? asked the young man. I only have the clothes I am wearing, clarified the old woman, and referring to a piece of old furniture, she said, But thank God my treasure is in the safe. The young man knew the uncle and aunt from old times when they had precious oil reserves in Texas. Thinking to himself, he deliberated that the aunt should accompany him. The day after, the copper widow gave her baggage to her nephew and got into the jeep, carefully carrying her small safe. So a new life started for her. Craig, who had a prosperous farm in Virginia, called Edward his elder brother, who had a neighboring farm. They exchanged ideas confidentially and concluded that the canister box from which their aunt never got far away from must contain valuable jewelry. Then they agreed upon taking care of the aunt. Relatives came from far, competing for Mrs. Cowper's company, but Craig and Edward used to say that Aunt Amelia was tired and the doctors did not allow her to extend much effort. Commonly, in the evenings, either one of her nephews would spy on the old woman through the door keyhole. They always saw her holding on to a lighted candle while bending over the open safe. She was probably looking at what she called her treasure, or her wealth. Thus she lived for nine more years, always requested by the whole family, and respectfully treated by both of her nephews, who maintained an interest in her. When death broke this situation down and conducted the Cowper widow to a better life, Craig and Edward locked themselves in her bedroom and took over the coveted safe. However, when they opened it, they found only an old volume of the Gospel, and on the slick volume, the following message that was written by the disincarnated aunt. My sons, may God reward you for your charity towards me, but be careful with life on earth. And with her long experience in the world, the elderly woman finished her message from verse 10 of chapter 6 in Paul's first letter to Timothy. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. New York, New York, USA, July 10, 1965. 